Uh, good morning, all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for another live stream here with Joan Butts from JoanButtsBridge.com. Hi, Joan. Hi. How are you, Bajia? I'm I'm hanging in there. It's uh, mm -hmm. interesting times, but I appreciate the chance to be able to watch you play and help us through <laughs> by uh, sharing your thinking as you play some hands. Good. So uh, for everyone joining us uh, over on YouTube, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for everyone who's already saying uh, hello, saying good morning, uh, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone knows that starting next week, uh, four classes that Joan is teaching on major suit raises is uh, open to all. And um, there's a link uh, right below the YouTube video where you can get more information. And maybe we'll hear a little bit more about that as you play and afterwards. Um, and I will be here for tech support. So Joan, just shout out if I can come and help you out in any way. Thanks, Bajir. Hi, Thanks. everyone. Um, hi there. I We're still at home, but I hope that you're playing lots of bridge because there's lots of bridge online you can play. Well, I thought that today I'd just get straight into these hands. There are four hands we're going to look at today and they're hands from my random play online. Mostly these hands, you play them and there's no comment or anything, but I've started to um, collect some interesting ones and... My gold members can play them again, but everybody else, when Bajir's finished with the video, you can go through them. So let's look straight away at the first hand. And I'll be sending some notes on my website and you can also make comments about it and send the messages to Bajir and to me. But anyway, let's start off with this hand. Can I hope everybody can see it. You've got five good diamonds, ace, jack, 10, eight, six, and the bidding's gone pass, pass, pass to you. So although some people might want to pass this hand based on the rule of um, 15, I think we're going to open today. We're not coming here to pass. So let's open one diamond and see what happens. Partner set a heart. Well, that's good. First thing to note is that partner is a past hand. So they can't have an opening hand, but they've got at least four hearts. Well, we should raise hearts and we'll show a minimum opening hand by raising hearts to two. Now, this is a bid that I thought some of you wouldn't be aware of. And I'm going to leave some notes on my website. This is a gadget called Spiral. And what that means is that partner with two no trumps is asking us what's our hand like and what they must have. They couldn't have only six to nine points because otherwise they would just pass two hearts. So they're actually saying to us, do you have four hearts? Or sometimes people raise on three which is actually a good idea if you've got a bad doubleton. But partner's saying, I'm quite keen to go further because I'm about 10 or 11 points and Tuno Trumps is asking you to describe your hand and in particular to describe your heart raise. Well, if we had three hearts only, we would be in diamonds or something else. But here... We've got a hand, a lot of people would probably say, let's just bid three hearts because if you were just counting high card points, you'd say I've only got 12. But I think you're a lot better than that because I think you've got a beautiful fifth diamond, you've got an excellent diamond suit. So I'm going to be really daring today and I'm going to bid four hearts. I know that's a lot, but let's see if we can make it. So partner's actually playing it, and on my site, when partner plays it, it's this is the dummy, the south is the dummy, and the north will play it. So let's look at our chances. We've got one loser in spades, don't we? We're missing the king and the jack of hearts, so we don't know where they are. On a bad day, we might lose two hearts, but on a good day, we'll lose one, um, and the finesse will be on. So we've definitely got 
a loser in diamonds as well, but we've got two diamonds in the north hand and five in the south hand. So let's just think we've got one diamond loser, one spade loser, and hopefully one heart loser. But when you just count losers, that doesn't always show you the way to 10 tricks. You've got to do a bit more work than that. We could try to trump two clubs, these two clubs, we could try to trump in dummy, or the other alternative is we could set up the diamond suit. I think we're going to go for the diamond suit today. So let's play low. They correctly play the nine and we win the queen. Don't touch trumps. We wouldn't want to play trumps from that hand anyway because we would need to cross to the south hand in order to play a heart up. So let's get straight into diamonds and see where the king and the queen of diamonds are. So we'll play the four. There's the queen. Right, what could that hand have? It could have a singleton queen. It could have king, queen and another. Or it could have king, queen, doubleton. Well, either way, things are looking good. We win the ace, and now let's make a play in hearts. So we'll play the two of hearts and try the queen. We'll take the finesse. Ah, it held the trick. So that means that we know that the king is in the west hand. Don't touch hearts yet. Don't cash the ace of hearts quite yet. Let's try diamonds again. And sure enough, the hand on our right had king, queen and another diamond. So our jack is winning, our ten's winning and our eight will win as well. So let's play the jack and the nine fell. That means that the diamonds were three in one hand and three in the other. That set up our diamonds to be winners. Hooray, hooray. Now let's discard a spade. Now play hearts. Very often, people play hearts too quickly. They play trumps too quickly. What you should do is use the trump suit as a way to cross from one hand to the other. So we've found the king of hearts. We have a missing heart and it's a winner for them. It's the jack. So there's no need to play another heart when they've got a winner. There'd be every reason to play a heart if their heart was just a little heart and we could win it, but not when it's the jack. So let's cross over to the club ace. We know they're going to win the jack of hearts. Cross to the club ace and play the 10 of diamonds. We could even play the eight if we wanted to, but play the 10, it's a winner. And let's discard our losing spade. They've trumped with the jack. They were always going to make that trick anyway, so we don't care really. So play the king of spades. They're expecting to win this trick, but they're not going to. Look, we're trumping. Now, if we look carefully, we've got all the rest of the tricks. We've got two hearts in the south hand. We've got the king of clubs, which we're taking now. And we can trump a club. The eight of diamonds is a winner, but even the ten of clubs is a winner. So we, on this hand, have actually made 11 tricks. Isn't that amazing? Um, when I looked at the number of people, 500 people had played this hand and not very many people had reached game. And I can understand that because if you were just counting high card points, you'd say, oh, we haven't got 25 or 26 for game. But it just goes to show there's so much more to evaluating a hand than just looking at high card points. And when I do the lesson and start them next week on major suit raises, I'm going to be looking at lots of other things apart from high card points, which make hands attractive. So if you've got any questions about that, in particular the gadget spiral, just send them to me and I'll put notes on it on my website. So let's go on to the next hand. Here's hand two. 
This time, I noticed that about 200 people had played this hand and only half of them had made their contract. So these little hands, here we've got ace is four, two aces, that's eight, two kings, that's three each. So we've got eight and six of 14 and two jacks, 15, 16. We've got 16 points and a balanced hand. So everybody who's playing standard would open this hand one no trump. And that's what we're playing in. To be honest, playing no trumps, one no trump, is a dreadfully hard contract. People sort of think, oh, look, we're just at the one level. It should be easy. But when you don't have a lot of points and you should only be in one no trump, it's not easy at all because it's actually hard to know what to do. So when we're in no trumps, what we do is count our definite winners and we've got to find seven tricks. Well, half the people who played this did not find seven tricks. First of all, let's think about the lead. The lead is probably from a length in clubs. So see how we've got the two and the four and they've led the three? It's very likely that West has four clubs. So that means that our club suit, we have seven clubs, our club suit is going to be not producing tricks for us. Apart from the fact that we're going to lose to the ace and the king, we actually can't get over there. The north hand is really weak in that it doesn't have entries. And for hands to work, you need to be able to cross from one hand to the other. So we sort of forget about the fact that we've got seven clubs. So it goes three, two, ten. Boy, we've made a club trick. That's good. Now what to do? I find these hands the most difficult of all. And people often don't know what step to take first. Sometimes you think that you've got to do all the work on hands, but actually it's a good idea sometimes to just lose a trick and let the opponent see what they're doing. It happens quite a lot that they don't defend properly. They're not always perfect. So on a hand like this, we know we've made one club trick We've got the ace of spades is two and two hearts are four. That's it. We've got to find three more tricks. But let's see if the opponents can find some for us. So at this stage, I like the look of that spade suit. If you notice, we've got the seven, eight, nine, ten and ace. So let's play a low spade and hand it over to them. They win the queen. Okay, let's think about that. When we've got seven cards of a suit, it's more likely to, put, to be dividing four, two against us than three, three. So this might be the queen from a doubleton. We're missing the king, queen, jack. So we'll just play the two. They follow. Now they have played not a particularly good defensive card. They're leading diamonds and they're opening up that suit. It's sometimes dangerous for the opponents to open up new suits for us. So we'll play a little diamond over to the ace. Now our king has established another trick for us. And they're returning a spade. Now what to do? I'm going to go up with the ace. And sure enough, the king fell. Now what that looks like is that spades were king, queen, doubleton or they could have had king, queen, jack. But either way, we've won the ace. And if you notice, we've got the 10, 9, 8. They've got the jack, but after that, we've developed another trick. So let's give them their spade trick now. This is the same principle of handing it over to them. Don't be afraid of handing the lead over to the opponents because they can go wrong too. Now, the six of diamonds is returned. No reason not to try the jack. And it holds the trick. So that means the hand on our right has the ace and the queen of diamonds. So we are doing pretty well on this hand that we didn't expect to do well on. So at the moment, we've got three tricks. 
we've got to make seven. So the ten of spades we've established as a fourth trick and we've got five, six, and the king of diamonds will be seven. So we've actually made it. Let's just take out tricks before something terrible happens. I, I like to take my winners when I know I've got enough. So five tricks, six tricks. And we could try something clever uh, and play a club, but I just want to run for home on this hand. I'm pretty happy to be making seven tricks and I would now play a club, but we haven't got much hope for clubs. So they'll take their top club. Oh, we made an extra trick, my goodness. That is a big surprise. That would be a very, very good score. And in fact, West should have discarded a club. They shouldn't have let us make the last club at the end. But the main point I want to make is that if you bravely let the opponents win a few tricks because it's hard for them to defend well and sometimes it helps you towards getting an extra trick. So, as I said, half the people who played this hand didn't make it. It's a very hard hand to play, really, and those little one-note trump contracts always make a plan and be happy to lose because in the long run you'll probably get the tricks back. Okay, so on to hand three. So let's have a good look at this one. Whew, what have we got here? We've got, let's add up our points. A very strong hand. 20 high card points plus a fifth diamond. And look at the bidding. West has opened two diamonds. That's a week two with six diamonds. And we're all vulnerable. So they're sure to have six diamonds and they'll probably have, they should have the king, the queen and the ten of diamonds. So what do you think is the best thing to do on this hand? Whenever people preempt against you, it always makes things harder. So your, your first choice, because we're vulnerable and they're vulnerable too, is to pass two diamonds. If you did that, you'd be hoping to take them down. And, I mean, you've got very good diamonds, haven't you? You've got ace-jack, eight, xx. You'll definitely take them down because you've got so many points. But we've got to weigh up whether taking them down one or two or three or four without doubling them, whether it's better than trying for three no trumps. Well, if we bid three no trumps, that'll give us 600. Or if partner bids something else, at least we've reached game. So I don't think our best action on this hand is to pass. If you bid two no trumps here, it would be saying I've got 16 to 18, something like that. But you're bigger than that and you've got all the suits covered. So I think we should bravely just bid three no trumps. And partners made a bid that some of you may be confused about. Well, if you're playing transfers, partners four diamonds would actually be a transfer to hearts. So if you're not playing transfers, I know that that will be confusing, but there's a lesson on my online school about transfers. And even if it's at this high level, four diamonds would still be saying, I don't want to play no trumps. I want you to bid four hearts. So we'll do as we're told and we'll just click on four hearts. And let's see what partners got. Oh, as expected, they've got amazing hearts, but they needed to have them. And as also expected, the lead is the king of diamonds, promising the queen and probably the ten. So let's just think about this. How will the diamonds be divided? If West has six and we've got five, that's 11. One in dummy is 12. And their partner will have a singleton. 
So that's something we need to keep in mind the whole time that we're playing this hand. Let's play the nine. And we've got a very strong chance of making four hearts. Some people, when they played this hand, I don't know how they did, but they actually were in six. They were in slam and some people made it. So that was beyond me. I was really surprised about that. What are we going to need to do? We've got no losers in hearts, so we've got seven heart tricks. The ace of diamonds is eight. The ace of spades is nine. And the ace king of clubs are 11. If the club queen is in the east hand, we'll make 12 tricks. So that's what we're relying on. There's no point in trying to trump diamonds in the long hand because our opponent on the right has only got one diamond. So on this hand, there's no reason not to draw trumps. So play the king. And now the eight. We had seven and two are nine trumps and we find they've broken three, one. So there's the last trump, pitch a diamond. And what to do next? Correct play would be this. It would be to play a club up to the top club. Don't take the finesse immediately. We need to get a bit more of a picture. So play a diamond back and trump it. Now take the club finesse. And we shut our eyes and hope for the best, but put the jack in, but it loses to the queen. So I can't see that we're going to be making 12 tricks on this hand at all because we play the king of clubs and we've got a spade loser. There's nothing we can do about that. So we might as well just take our trumps and there's the king of spades. So we made 11 tricks on the hand. As I said, about 500 people played this hand. Some of them made slam, but I still can't work out how. But if you did, well, please let me know. But the decisions on hands like this, when you've got a very strong hand south um, and they've preempted against you, it's very hard to make the right decision. And the other thing that some people may not be used to is that their partner who's got hearts actually bids four diamonds, which is a transfer to hearts, because the goal of transfers is to let the strong hand be declarer because they've often got uh, sequences like ace, king, jack or king, doubleton or ace, jack where it's better if they're declarer. So this hand worked perfectly but we made 11 tricks. So on to the fourth hand now. These are all hands from the random play hands of my site. You can play hundreds of hands a day if you want to as you're sitting at home now. Um, and you can also go to all my lessons. So I think this is an extraordinary hand. So the opponent on the left opens one no trump and their partner east is making a transfer to hearts. Well, what do you think we should do? We've got ace, jack, 10, eight, six times clubs, ace of diamonds, no hearts, and four spades. I think a hand like this must come into the bidding. And I think the best action is just to make a natural bid of three clubs. We've got a very nice suit. Ah, now here's a point in the bidding. They could have passed three clubs, our West Hand opponent. But they know their partner has transferred to hearts. When they bid hearts, when there was no need to, because it could have been passed around to their partner, to actually accept the transfer like that promises three or more hearts. So in other words, the opponents are happy to play three hearts. And because we've got a void in hearts, 
we know they'll probably have a good heart fit. Now, here's a big question for you. What would you do now? Would you pass or would you bid? And if you do bid, what would you bid? We've already said clubs, so partner knows we've got five or six good clubs. Now, should we keep going? I think the very best action on this hand is double. And for people who might think that it could be a penalty double, the answer is no, it won't be a penalty double because if you follow the rule that whenever the opponents have got a known fit and they, east-west, have a known heart fit on this hand, then a double should be for takeout. What it would be saying is, partner, I'm very short in hearts and I do want us to play this hand. So I'm not going to say double because I know that sometimes the robots pass hands out, they pass things out. What I actually did on the hand is I bid three spades. But to be honest, I think double is a better action. But you need to discuss it with partner because you wouldn't want to have three hearts doubled making happening. So I bid three spades. It was a bit daring, but I don't like them playing three hearts. Ooh! Partner raised to four spades, heavens above. Let's see what happens. So look at partner's hand. They've got not much, but a lovely spade fit. And let's count our tricks. We've got to make 10 tricks. Notice that our left-hand opponent who opened one no trump, who will have 15, 16 or 17 points, has led the king of clubs. That's pretty helpful for us because we've got the ace, jack, 10, 8 and the 9. So we can do pretty well on this hand. So let's say we, we think we've got two diamond losers maximum. We've got no heart losers because we can trump those hearts in the south hand. We've got no club losers because we've got a singleton opposite the ace. And we're pretty sure that the spade king will be in our left-hand opponent's hand because they opened one no trump. So let's just see how we go. Win the ace. And I'm going to do something daring at this point. We could take the spade finesse now. Maybe that'll be safer. Uh, yeah, let's try that. Could be safer. Try the, we've noticed that we've got the eight, nine, 10, jack, queen. So we could play the eight. Sure enough, it holds the trick. Now, the safest way to cross to the south hand is to trump a heart. Now I want to make a play, which is called a roughing finesse. I'm going to play the jack of clubs. I know that the queen is in this hand and I'm actually going to discard a loser. Right, so that held the trick. I'm not going to take any more risks because it could be dangerous. So the club is not quite set up yet. So I'm going to play the nine of hearts. Oh, sorry, we're in this hand, the jack of clubs. Oh, let's play another club. Let's play the ten of clubs. And they're still not. But this time we need to trump because I don't think... Sure enough, our right-hand opponent only had two clubs. So we're going to play the nine of hearts to cross back to the hand. And let's try another club. Right, there's the queen trumpet. And I'm going to play the ace of trumps now. Our clubs are winners. We hope, sure enough, the king was doubleton. That was lucky, probably more lucky than good play. So we're going to go over to the ace and our clubs are winners. So we're going to play a diamond discard, play a club, discard a diamond. The trumps are drawn. Now we'll play a diamond, give up one diamond, 
And miraculously, we made 12 tricks on this hand. Could you imagine that? It's incredible, isn't it? Sure enough, our left-hand opponent had the normal number of points for opening one no trump. But these days, what I find is that people interfere with one no trump a lot, a lot more than they used to, and it usually pays off. I mean, I didn't even think that we would end up in four spades on this end, but we were able to make 12 tricks. They would have done quite well if we'd left them in hearts too. So I think the idea is that if you've got a really interesting shape, then bid. Don't be, don't be afraid of bidding on a hand. Um, on this hand, it paid dividends. So when I saw the hand, not many people had reached game, which is why I thought it would be a good hand to discuss. So everyone, they're the four hands, and I'm starting the lessons next Monday on major suit raises. These are just random hands that we've discussed today. When I do a lesson, I'll talk a lot more about a particular topic. So I'll go right into all of what we need to look at with raising partners major suits. So Bajia, are you there? I've finished. I am here. Thank you, oh, Joan. Good. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, everyone. I was watching along with everyone. That last hand, that's 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 awesome. That's really you know, cool. Yeah. See, you never think that you should bid on those hands, certainly not to game, but Boy, oh boy, you could make a lot of tricks on it. So my advice to people is don't be too careful on some hands when you've got a very good, anything like 6-4 shape. That's amazing. Mm. You know, you want to play those hands. Yeah. We had um, uh, a couple people leaving uh, really nice questions. One question about the third hand. Yeah. Would, uh, is, would doubling have been an option? Um, I think it would have worked on if you doubled with that big 20 count. It would have been fine to double because partner would have bid their hearts. So you would have been fine on that hand. But I felt that three no trumps when you've got all those diamonds was probably the best action. Um, but you see, it all worked out because partner bid four hearts anyway. So double on that hand would have worked, partner would have bid hearts, but I prefer three no trumps and then you convert it to four hearts. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for leaving those questions. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us, for leaving uh, the friendly greetings for uh, patience while I was trying to resize the screen. And oh. um, please stay in touch with uh, both Joan and I, send over feedback. We'd love to keep doing free events like this. And of course we would love to see as many of you as possible over at Joan's online lessons next month. And yeah. Joan, we'll both send out the replay video, won't we, to our newsletters? Oh, great. Okay, that'd be great. And actually, everyone, on my website under news, I'll put a little summary of what I think those hands, what's in those hands. I'll just type up a little summary. But my gold members, which, by the way, you can join. If you're a new member, I'm giving you a month free. Um, you can actually go in and replay those hands however you want to and practice them over and over. So, you know. And uh, from one learner to uh, other learners, I cannot recommend Jones Online School of Bridge enough. The library of lessons is just phenomenal. So for anyone else out there who's maybe a permanent learner or uh, learning uh, like us at any level, really. It's an incredible resource, so highly recommended. Oh, um, thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> oh, of course, Joan. It, it's really such a pleasure hearing you share your thinking. So much appreciated. I and again, too, I hope it wasn't too complicated for people, but they were just hands that came up and I thought, well, let's, let's talk about them because these are real life hands. They're just happening. And um, anyway, please let me know if you've got any questions and I'll answer them. Okay, I've got lots of time to answer questions at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> We're all around. Joan, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Until next time, please take good care of yourselves. Yeah. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye.